Hi everyone, happy Monday. I am so glad you guys are here for our second week of our bread series. And I just couldn't resist um, including this recipe in the series because it's so crazy simple. You guys are not even going to believe how simple this is. And um, there's just a couple of tricks um, to this recipe, and I will explain that here as we go. So this is pre-recorded because it's a bread recipe and we have to let bread rise. And uh, it takes a, a couple of hours from start to finish for this particular bread. So I just went ahead and filmed it um, after our first series. So if you notice, I'm wearing the same thing I wore last week, that's why. Uh, but what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to walk you through this. So the one trick to this recipe is you uh, need to start it either the night before or first thing in the morning. And it, you want it to sit for eight to 12 hours. So here's how we're gonna start. And this truly is how easy this recipe is. You're going to use a fourth of a teaspoon of yeast. And we're gonna put that in a bowl. And I have a wooden spoon, so grab a wooden spoon. I love working with wooden spoons. On. Um, and then uh, we are going to be, I've got my flour here. Um, we are going to take one and a half cups of warm water. And I always test it with my finger. And if it is hot to the touch and you can't hold your finger in there, do not use it um, if it's too hot because it will kill this yeast. So you just want warm water and I can hold my finger in there and feel that it's warm. And that's really the test that I've go by and has worked. So you're just going to pour one and a half cups of warm water into that yeast and then we're just going to stir it around and you're going to see you know the yeast floating um, but as you stir it it's going to dissolve and we're just going to stir it around until it's all dissolved throughout and your water is going to look rather cloudy. And if you see like a chunk of uh, yeast, you can always drag it over to the side like I just did and uh, kind of smush it along there so it gets incorporated in here. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to be adding um, some flour to this. And so we're gonna add three cups of all-purpose flour. So here's one cup. Two cups and then our third cup. Go. Then, so we're done with our flour. And then the next thing we need is some salt. And we just need a teaspoon and a half of salt. So I'm gonna add that in. And then a half of a teaspoon. So one and a half teaspoons of salt. So you guys, all we have in here is a quarter, a fourth of a teaspoon of yeast, a cup and a half of warm water, three cups of all-purpose flour, and then a teaspoon and a half of salt. And you're just going to take your big spoon and you're going to stir this around. I always start in the center when I stir. And this week I'm not using the mixer because I always like to show you guys that you can do everything, every recipe that we give you on these share classes, you can do them on uh, in, in just a regular bowl. And so you're just going to keep stirring in the middle and as you stir that dough is going to pick up any loose things. And what you're going to see here is it's going to look ragged and sticky and that is perfectly fine. Go and it really does automatically pull away from the sides of the bowl. And I just try to scrape it off if there is a lot on the sides. This last little spin here with the spoon. And we have everything incorporated. So all you do is take your finger and remove any of the excess dough. And Scrape that off here. There we go. And we're going to set our spoon off to the side. 
And I'm just going to clean up my hand here real quick. And then the next step to grab a piece of plastic wrap. And you're going to just cover the bowl and you're going to let this rise, not really rise, actually, I shouldn't say rise. Um, you're going to let this sit in a warm area for eight to 12 hours. So I love to do this right before I go to bed at night. So by the time I want to prepare this late in the afternoon, after getting home from work, um, this comes together in no time at all. So that is step one. And then I'm going to move on. Um, I'm going to wait for 12 hours and we will pick up with part two. So I can't wait to see you guys and show you how simple this recipe is. And um, I'll just give you a heads up that we're going to be needing a Dutch oven or an oven safe uh, pot that has a lid. Um, so if you have a Dutch oven, that's perfect. If you have a cast iron pot that has a lid, that works really well too. Um, so I have that ready for the next part of the recipe and we'll continue on uh, tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Hi everyone, we are back with our uh, dough that we started um, last night and it's been oh, about 12 hours now and you can see what happened to that shaggy dough. It rose and we see bubbles everywhere and it's quite amazing how such a little amount of yeast that a quarter fourth of a teaspoon that we talked about um, allows this to happen overnight and it, you know resting it for that eight to 12 hours really does develop the flavor and you can let it go even longer but i just want to go ahead and get us started um, on this view so you can see what i'm going to do um, we are going to move the bowl off to the side and just dust our counter here with just a little bit of lightly sprinkle um, a work surface and we're going to just place the dough on it. So not a huge amount. And so we, when I sprinkled it, I used my hand. So my hand is already floured. So I'm just going to use it as a scoop and go around the side like this. And it, because you have that flour on there, it's not going to stick. And you're just going to lift it out of there and put it onto here. There we go. Off to the side. And then using just enough flour, we're, um, we're just going to sprinkle the top of the dough. And I had told you guys this is a no need uh, dough recipe, which is fantastic. So all I'm going to do is fold it over just a couple of times like this. So I'm not kneading it, but I just folded it over just like this. And I am going to fold. I folded it over a few times and then I set it back down. And then I'm going to grab a sheet of plastic wrap. And I'm just going to lay it over the top here. And we're going to let this rest for 15 minutes. Now, putting this plastic wrap over the top will help prevent it from drying out, you know, especially in Colorado, we have you know, dry conditions. So keep that plastic wrap on there. I'm going to go set the timer for 15 minutes and then we will come back and finish this up here and I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, so now we're back. We've let this rest for 15 minutes. So I'm just going to remove this plastic wrap from here. And then you want to just get enough flour on your fingers 
to prevent the dough from sticking. So I'm just rubbing flour on here and I'm gonna gently lift up this piece of dough from the counter and I have my fingers coated and it feels a little bit sticky. So I'm just gonna keep dipping my hand in the flour and folding it under like this. And you can even sprinkle just a wee bit on top as well. You don't want to use a lot. And you're just going to roll like this. Not a ton of movement here. And you're just gently shaping it into a ball is all we're doing. Just like this, I'm going to set it back down here. It's a wee bit sticky. Put that on. There we go. So you're not using much at all and we'll set it right back down on the flour. Now we're going to take a towel and we're just going to lay it out. And then you'll want to get your cornmeal. Anyway, so there's our towel. And now we're just going to sprinkle a generous coating of corn flour. Cornmeal, I mean, I didn't mean to say corn flour, just right in the center of the towel. So sprinkle it with the cornmeal and then you're going to take your dough pick it up and your seam is on the bottom right the underside we're going to put that right down onto the towel like this in our round shape here you guys can see and then you're just going to take another towel and lay it over the top and you're going to let it rise for one hour. You can also let it rise for about two hours. It's up to you how big you want it to get. Um, I usually do about a, an hour. I, I let it go a little bit over sometimes, but about 20 minutes before that time is up, I want you guys to get your stock pot out. Here's mine. And I want you to put your stock pot in the oven for, um, at least 20 minutes on 475 and just make sure that lid that's on your pot and um, make sure it is oven safe. So I'm using a Dutch oven here. You can use a cast iron um, pot as well. There's enamel um, oven safe pots that you can buy. My first one, I think I bought at Marshall's or TJ Maxx for 20 to $30. They're not crazy expensive. Um, they're extraordinarily handy for this bread recipe, um, but 20 minutes before this dough is finished rising, put this in the oven again on 475, and then I will show you what the next step is, and really this can't be any easier. <laughs> Hi right, guys, so we're back. And if you forgot to preheat that Dutch oven, um, go ahead and do that now. We're at the hour mark of letting this rise. Um, so I had put my Dutch oven in the oven at 475 for at least 20 minutes. So now I'm gonna go get that very hot uh, pan. So just be very careful because it's a very hot oven right now. So I'm gonna go get that and show you guys the next step. A lot of times I will just leave the pan in the oven because it is so hot. And then um, I just pull the rack out and take my bread directly to the oven. But for today, I wanna to show you guys so here is my very hot pan. So what I'm gonna do is lift this off here. And then what you wanna do is reach your hand underneath the dough and just lift up and let all that extra corn mill fall off. That way you don't have a mess all over the floor. You're gonna take it over to the hot pan and you're gonna flip it over so that 
side is up with the cornmeal that has been dusted. And then we're just going to give it a quick shake like this so it distributes it. And we're going to put our lid on and put it right back in the oven for 30 minutes. So it's now in the oven for 30 minutes and I'm just going to clean up uh, the cornmeal. A lot of times I'll lift that towel and with the dough on it and take it over to my sink. And so that way the cornmeal falls into the sink and I have less cleanup. You guys know I'm all about easier cleanup when you do this for a long, long time. Uh, you just find tricks of helping yourself out. So there we go all the cornmeal cleaned up here. And then, so we're gonna let that go for 30 minutes. The last, then what we're gonna do is when our timer goes off, uh, we are gonna go over to the oven and take off the lid and let it bake for another 15 minutes until it's super nice and golden brown. Uh, but remember, when that 30 minute timer goes off, just remove your lid, close the oven back up, and let it go for about 15 minutes longer. And I'll be back in just a few minutes to show you what that finished product looks like. Hi all, I just wanted to show you what this looks like coming up out of the oven and show you that the outside is nice and firm. It's this really um, hard outer crust, um, but I promise as soon as we slice into the middle of it, it's gonna be that soft, chewy texture that we all love in a bread. But I just thought that was interesting to show you guys. It's a super pretty loaf. So you guys, we let this rest for 30 minutes, let it cool, and someone in my house already cut into it. Um, but it's so fun as it's cooling, wait until you hear all the sounds that come from it. It's like a um, snap, crackle, and pop, like Rice Krispies. You can hear all the steam escaping from the inside. So you'll just hear these some nice little crisp sounds coming from it. And it's a fun sound, especially if you have a couple loaves going. Um, and those of you who have made this type of bread before know that sound and it's super fun to hear. Um, so when I cut this bread, because you know we have this outer crust here, um, when we cut it, you wanna use a serrated edge. And I'll cut a pretty thick slice here and show you guys just what it looks like. And it just, because it's a rustic bread like this, um, with that harder outer crust, um, you are gonna wanna use that serrated knife. It just makes it easier to cut. Um, but you guys can see the inside of this. And so of course, you know, grab some butter, if you have some on hand and uh, put that across here. Uh, another fun thing to do, um, if you slice this and it's still warm, I thought it was a little cold, so it's not quite spreading like I wanted to, but there we go, it's starting to spread. That is enough. But something that's fun to try is to take a, gar gar a fresh garlic clove and cut off the end and then just rub it across as it's warm and the garlic clove will literally melt as you're doing that and it'll, it'll give your bread a super nice flavor. So I think you guys would like that to give that a shot. Um, another fun thing to do, instead of making the bread this size, make them smaller, um, like small little bowls. 
And uh, it's a great thing, like bread bowls. Um, you can serve soup in in the winter time. And you cut off the top and then dig out the center, scoop your baked potato soup or any other yummy um, winter soup that you have. Um, that's a great use for this type of bread. I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. It makes the best toast in the morning or just to serve alongside a meal. Um, it, it's truly fantastic. You can see it's golden on top and super soft and moist in here. And I'll just cut it slice. And of course, I have to try it. So good. Crunchy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. And it, it's fabulous. You're going to think you're dining at a restaurant with this bread, maybe sitting in a European cafe with their delicious breads. That's what this bread reminds me of. And I hope you love it as much as our family does. Um, it is truly a treat. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and we'll give this easy recipe a, a try. And please always share with us um, when you uh, make these recipes. We love, we loved all the pictures that you sent in last week. Um, we had made those quick rosemary dinner rolls and uh, we love that you guys had such success with them. And so I hope you have good success with this one as well. And if you ever encounter any difficulty at all, you know, just let us know and we will walk you through um, any next steps that will ensure that you have a success. So you guys have a great um, week and we will see you for our next, our third class in our bread series next week. Thanks all.